What's up, everybody? Welcome to Claiming Christianity. My name is Steve. Today, we're going to be talking about digital resources. Uh, I feel like I've been making a bunch of videos recently uh, here in these live streams that are relatively controversial. They're not uh, intended to be controversial, but it turns out that uh, they are, <laughs> but they're not really. Anyway, we're going to get into it right now, and I'm going to do something in this video that I've never done before. No, it's not say anything that I've never said before, but I'm going to screen share my iPad with you guys. We're going to see how that goes, so you may want to hang around just to find out uh, if I crash and burn here during the live stream. Uh, but thank you guys so much for being here today. I want to preface this video this video, this video by saying this. I am a longtime proponent. Those of you who are friends of the channel uh, know that I'm a longtime proponent of having a physical Bible and having physical books. Uh, you can see by the shelves behind me, I have made a number of videos over the years. I didn't post them all because there's a bunch in the, um, uh, I, I didn't post them all in the, the description because I figured you guys can go look for them if you want to see them. But I've been a longtime proponent of having and using a physical Bible as your daily driver. Today, I may change that. This 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 video may be a changing of the tide for this guy anyway. What I'm not going to do is try to convince you to do one thing or the other. That truly is not the intent. I just really want to share with you how I've changed, how my views and thoughts have changed slightly. Um, and more so share with you guys solid resources that can equip you to be studying God's word, to be in God's word. And I know that we have some out there that can't just go out and buy a book and can't, you know, a Christian based book or, or even a Bible. And I've been encouraged by them over the years. Uh, the very first video I made on this channel, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom and it appears that I've been making these videos for um, like four years now, uh, which is crazy when I look back on it. Um, the very first video that I made has to do with physical or digital Bible and the super old school thumbnail that I put in there. It even has a real Bible and an iPad. Uh, it was probably an iPad one that I had. Um, but the idea is what should we be reading a physical Bible and, and not so much does it matter. I almost don't want to say that, but what should we be using? And I still agree with a lot of stuff I said. I, I read through those videos and I've made a couple of them over the years, uh, making the case for owning and using a physical Bible. I stand by what I said in those videos because I think that information is all still true. So like I said at the front, what I'm not going to do here today is try to convince you to switch. That's not the point. I'm just going to share with you what I've been doing, share what I've learned and how I'm using digital resources this, these days. And maybe those things can help you. Maybe it'll build your, your resource list and your availability, give you a new way to study and to look at the Bible and to spend time in the Bible in a way that you haven't used uh, or haven't thought of before. So I do want to say this, go back and watch those videos so you can be familiar with uh, the case that I make for owning a physical Bible. I still own quite a few physical Bibles, um, obviously, uh, and, and I, I still will use them. I still feel funny. I've gone to church for the last like two or three weeks uh, without a physical Bible, which is crazy. Um, I have a few friends at church who've been using their iPad for years and I've been chatting about it and everybody smiles because I'm the Bible guy, right? So when the Bible guy doesn't show up to church with a physical Bible, it turns a few heads and it's given me the opportunity to chat with people. So one thing that I will say that's changed as we get into why I'm okay with using a digital resource or, or um, a, not an actual physical book uh, Bible uh, is you know, my pastor's real big on verse memory, and I, I I try to be better about that. I try to be better about memorizing scripture. And the reason I bring that particular one, I have like five points that I make. I'm going to mention one that's changed and one that remains the same right now before we take a look at my iPad and the resources that I'm using. So he's real big on verse memory, and I have always wanted to be better about verse memory. I've started to memorize verses. We have kind of a 
not a system at our church, but we have a discipleship curriculum that involves specific verses and memorizing them for reasons, such as the gospel. What's the gospel? John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16, right? So we have a few verses like that, that um, we should have in the back of our head that be able to share with people. And a couple of the reasons that I made the case for having a physical Bible is because as humans, we get used to the actual physical book, being able to thumb through it. And I can open up this Bible because this is the one I use the most into certain spots. And my brain gets locked on to uh, where things are, you know, such and such a passage is on the bottom left of the left page. You, you learn those things. And if you're watching right now and you have a Bible that you use all the time, I know you know what I'm talking about. Psalm 23, you can tell me where it is on the page. Uh, Matthew 1, you know, stuff like that. So the verses that you read all the time. And that's uh, I've used those as reasons to have a physical Bible in the past. Now, again, I still stand behind those reasons because those things are true. But my pastor has encouraged me to memorize or is an encourager of memorizing the address. What does that mean? Here's what this means. And here's one of the reasons this has changed with my opinion on digital resources and using my iPads is because I got so in the habit of just memorizing where it was in the Bible. I would pick up a new Bible or a different Bible um, and kind of be lost a little bit, right? Because I didn't memorize the address. I didn't memorize John 3.16. Or I didn't memorize Ephesians 2, verses 4 and 5. Ephesians 2, verses, those are verses that I happen to have memorized. I can look those up in any Bible, anywhere, at any time, because I know the address. So when I'm speaking to somebody, when I'm defending a case, or when I'm making the case for the gospel, um, having the address memorized it doesn't make it so important that I, I have a physical Bible in my hand and in place. Uh, and I can open up their Bible. Hey, open up your Bible here. Let me show you where. And this is, I'm speaking personally here. I know that that has been a challenge for me in the past because I just kind of had memorized where it was in the Bible. Oh, let me look It's somewhere in John, uh, you know, and you thumb through John and kind of find it. Uh, I, I want to be better personally about knowing my Bible, about knowing scripture and knowing where it is. So when I get the opportunity to share that, I can share it. And by the way, this is a little sub note. When you memorize verses, memorize them exactly. Don't change the words around. Be diligent to, to memorize whatever translation it is you're memorizing verses in. Be diligent to memorize it exactly with the right is's and does in place. Um, that way when we share it and we open up to it and it says something different, we're not wrong. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, so that is one thing that has changed about me using digital resources about me using my iPad all the time um, to read and study that has changed from the past, which would be you can thumb to it, your hands get to know it, your, your eyes get to know what's on the page. Those things are all still true, and I still think they're important. But for me, that's changed because I want to be more diligent to know my way around the Bible by address. Number two, the thing that has not changed for me, and I struggle a little bit with this. I don't know if my kids are watching today. One of them sometimes watches. If you're watching, tell me as, as we con uh, comment here. Um, but one thing that hasn't changed is that when we're staring at a screen, our kids, our family members just see us staring at a screen yet again, right? So this is one, one area that I try to be careful. This is one area that one of the reasons that I've been a big proponent of physical Bibles, and I still am, um, but when somebody sees you sitting down to read the Bible, again, mostly your kids, the people that live in your house with you, they see you reading the Bible. They don't see you just looking at a screen and they might assume you're reading YouTube or updating your Facebook status. Um, you know, th that's something to be careful of, especially if you have young kids living in the house. Okay. So those are the two things that as I looked back on the videos that I've made about physical Bibles that have changed for me. And as we swing into me now making the case as I've grown and learned, learned or built resources, uh, you know, things change. Our, our opinions change and that's okay to using digital resources and how I use them. I am pretty excited about, um, about 
my device here, not just because of the device. I think that technology is dangerous. It can be used inappropriately. It can cause us all sorts of trouble. But you know what? It can also be a blessing and it can also be a benefit to us in our walk with God. I think if we use it the right way and have the right resources. So uh, my wife saw fit to purchase me an iPad. I'd been wanting, I've been wanting one for about six months or a year. Uh, for teaching purposes, for reading and learning purposes, uh, a smaller computer, which is what an iPad is, that I can bring back and forth to church if I have to type up a lesson real quick. I didn't have a way to do that. So she blessed me with an iPad um, just in the last couple of months, and I've been using it. And here's how. So I'm going to switch over my screen right now and continue to talk. Hopefully it'll all uh, continue to work. If it doesn't, let me know in the comments. Um, but, uh, I'm going to show you how I use my iPad and the, the apps, if you will, or the things that I like about it and why I've switched to using digital all the time. So here you're looking at my iPad, at my iPad screen. And the first one I want to share with you is Accordance Bible software. So I started using Accordance. I, I by the way, I did a kind of a review. It, it's not a, it's a review and an intro. It's not really a tutorial on this software here. And I hope you'll go back and take a look at it if you haven't yet. Because now there's a couple of these softwares that you can use. Accordance is one of them, you know, eSword. I don't know much about the other ones that I'll mention here, but I know about Accordance because I have a few resources on here that I've really started to like and I've really started to use a lot. So what you're looking at is me scrolling through Psalms. Lately, I've been reading uh, one proverb a day because the days match up with the amount of proverbs and I've been learning a ton from proverbs. And I've been going through Psalms and I've been going through um, a book called The Treasury of David by Charles Spurgeon. And that has been fantastic. But let me show you Accordance and how I'm using it here. What you see open here, you can see at the top, is uh, New King James Version uh, with Strong's. That S means with Strong's Concordance uh, numbers. So you can see as I scroll here through Psalms, what you see on the right, that thing that says N-I-C-O-T, that's the New International Commentary on the Old Testament. It's uh, one of my favorite commentary sets that I happen to have, and it just follows along with me, okay? That is a huge time staver. Uh, time staver? Time saver. That's a, let me tell you, that is a massive time saver for me because all these com all these commentaries here, sorry, all these commentaries here, I love having them. I love having a physical library, but they take time. It takes time and it takes effort to, to scroll through them, looking through them. I can't carry them with me everywhere. But with Accordance, uh, again, this is not sponsored by Accordance. I'm just telling you how I feel. With this Accordance Bible software, I have all my resources right here. Okay, so I can open up to all these resources here. Different commentaries, FF Bruce's commentaries on a few of these things, Greek dictionaries. Uh, if there's a word that I want to know, I can just tap on it and it gives me the Greek. It gives me some information on the Greek. Uh, look at how handy and convenient that is. Um, I also have multiple different Bibles right here. ESV with Strong's, uh, King James Version, the LSB. Oops, this is I just switched to the King James Version Apocrypha. See how easy it is to do? Uh, which really is a good thing, okay? So this is the number one. Now, this isn't a full iPad tutorial on Accordance. I just want to show you what's available. You can also buy books. Sorry, um, I've been encouraged by some of my friends that live that that I've developed race, relationships with in countries that are uh, persecuted, for lack of a better term. They can't just go buy Christian books and have them, but they can still have like Accordance. They can still have uh, Bible software like this that they can get books to read. So if you want to read just a normal book, you can read it right here. By the way, this is how I use this in church. I'll show you. For those of you who are here, you can get rid of the second book. And with an iPad anyway, I don't know how this is on other devices, but I can open up my notes app right here next to it. And I can take notes. I'm going to show you this notes app here in just a minute because I use this for the glory of God, hopefully for the glory of God. Uh, I, you know, I do my best to do this, but you can open and close these things real super easy um, to use and read through your Bible. Okay, so Accordance Bible Software. Uh, by the way, if, if, uh, if you don't have this on your iPad already or on your computer, you can download a copy of it for like 20 bucks and you get a handful of resources for that 20 bucks. I think you get a two or three month check it out for free. Uh, so go do that. If you can check it out for a month or two for free and you don't like it, don't keep it. Um, I, I just paid the 20 bucks because I liked it so quickly that I don't need it for free. For you know, I just, I'm going to pay for it because 
I appreciate it. And Accordance has given me some extra. Uh, what I will say is wait on version 14. Version 14 is a little bit, uh, that's the newest version that's out there. Version 14 is, is a little glitchy uh, and they're working to fix that. But stick with version 13, download that and start checking it out. Start using it. All right, let me show you another huge thing here that I, I, I've been using the Bible forever, but this is this black app down here, the Net Bible software, okay? So this is the app. Um, if you use it on your main computer, it, it works uh, slightly differently, but has the same information. So this is the Net Bible with full notes. If you touch here, you get the note that popped up. I'm going to leave that note up so you can read it while I talk. But each one of these little numbers here um, explains not what the passage is talking about, but why that word means why they translated it that way. So the Netful Notes Bible, and this is free. Uh, you download this app for free, and it has all of the notes here as you touch them. What this word kind of means in the Greek uh, or in the Hebrew, because we're in Proverbs. In the Greek or in the Hebrew, what this word means and why they translated it the way they translated it. I, I use this feature all the time uh, because I want to know in the original languages what these things meant, why they were written this way. Uh, and this has like thousands and thousands and thousands of notes. So using this on a uh, like an app or a device is really handy. You can buy a copy of the Netful Notes Bible and it has all those notes in there. But again, look at how easy it is just to scroll through here and... Uh, you know, and touch on the, touch on the numbers. Okay. So that's the second one I want to mention. Now I told you, I'd show you a little bit about notes and here it is. Um, so I use this notes app a lot because I can write on it with my, uh, like Apple pencil, but I have a lot, a bunch of things scroll over on the left side here. Uh, we'll just touch on claiming Christianity notes. So I'm reviewing a prayer app that I'm going to mention in just a minute called prayer mate. Uh, it's free. I'm just reviewing it. Cause I want to tell you guys about it. So I started to use it. I like it a lot, um, and I have some notes for them because I, I contacted them and chatted with them, let them know that I was going to be reviewing it. They say they'd be interested to hear what I had to say, and there's a few things that I think they could include in this app that aren't there already. You know, maybe they'll change it or add it, maybe they won't. Uh, but I have all these notes that I can just take on the fly. I have uh, like a whole set of church study notes. You know, if I'm listening to a sermon, I just write the notes down right there in my app, and it's in super, it's there super easy. Um, super easy to use. Okay. As I mentioned this prayer mate app on the bottom left, you can see what the icon looks like, but let me talk to you a minute about this. I'm not going to open it because it has a lot of private prayers in it, um, that not everybody in the world needs to see, but I've started, I looked at prayer apps recently because I want to be more diligent to remember my prayers, to remember answered prayers, to be able to take notes, to be able to pray for certain people, um, at certain times. And, uh, and be diligent to do that. And I thought, you know what? I bet you I could use a device uh, and I bet you I could, there's an app out there that can help me do that. This app I was slightly familiar with. I downloaded four apps. Within an hour, I deleted three of the four because they were kind of clunky, kind of hard to use and weren't doing what I wanted them to do. And some of them, like you had to pay for. This one is free. Um, again, it's called Prayer Mate here. It's on the bottom left, as you can see. Uh, and what it does is keep my prayers, keep my people in line, uh, you know, like, and what I'm going to do is when I review it, I'm going to download a different version on a different app and I'll show you how it works on the app. But that's another thing you can do as you're working through your daily devotionals is pray for people, have an app, even if it's just a simple note on your phone with the things you want to pray for. Um, it's a fantastic way to use technology to better your devotional time and to be equipped to do ministry and to be equipped to love people, to pray for people, to pray for yourself and your family is have things written down. Uh, and that's one app that can do it. Now I want to show you iBooks. If you have an iDevice or an Apple device, um, I use iBooks a lot because I've been preaching and teaching out of my iPad. This is one of the reasons why I wanted it. I was encouraged by a, a fellow pastor of mine who I saw use an iPad to preach. And I asked him some questions. He had great word. This is one of the last Sunday school lessons I taught, but it's huge. I can have every lesson that I teach right here in iBooks. I just basically opened it up myself, save it as a PDF so I can't accidentally mess it up in the middle of, um, in the middle of teaching. And I have all these little collections here. So if I want to 
preach something that I've already preached before or go through a class that I've already gone through before, they're all right there with me. I can change them. I can take notes because I got a little keyboard um, that can attach to my to my iPad here. So it, what I'm trying to tell you here is these are all really good ways, in my opinion, excuse me, I have a little cold. I had to end up standing. Um, but, uh, these are really good ways that you can use technology to your benefit, to increase your walk, uh, with God, to increase your study habits, your, your study ability, my writing. If I write something down on a sheet of paper, I've just found in the past, I almost never go back and, and read it again. Uh, now it's still writing it with your hand actually does something physically inside your brain. Uh, it'll help you remember those things. So it's a good thing to do. Again, I'm not trying to convince you one way or the other. But I just think these are valuable ways when I am able to take notes. Let me see if I can find, um, let me see if I can find here for you. I'll share my screen again and go into, I told you I've been going through like, uh, I've been going through Proverbs and uh, let me see if I can get to it real quick. So I've been going through the Proverbs. Let me see if I can find a proverb that has uh, a note on it and show you what that looks like in this particular, in accordance anyway. Um, where am I? Where is the last one that I did? See, it's super easy to find all this stuff. Um, but as you're going through, you can touch on a note. See, look, highlight, user note. I can type as much stuff as I want in my Proverbs study. Uh, test, test, test. I'll erase this later. But you can type whatever you want in there as you're going through. And it's going to drop a little note. See on the, on the right side there, all the way over to the screen on the right. And you can keep copious amounts of notes. You can go back and make yourself references if you want. Um, and, uh, you know, and study this way. You can, the ability that you have with a device, again, it, may, it, it sounds like I'm trying to sell you on this here and I'm not. I just want you to know what's out there, even if you have a physical Bible next to you. So another thing that I do often, I told you I'm going through the treasury of David. Um, so in my morning, uh, during my morning devotions, I open up accordance here. And just today, I think I was on, uh, I was on Psalm four. So I'm on Psalm four. Now I'm going to open up, um, my Kindle because I have the treasury of David. I'm also reading this book, practical religion, which is a book you need to read by the way. Um, right here, Psalm four. Okay. So Psalm four is here in the treasury of David. I can open up uh, accordance and have them right next to each other. As I read his commentary. Okay. And the new King James Psalm four, this is a fantastic way to take notes, to read, to learn. And, and it's really helped me out. Now I'll go through a couple other quick ones here. And again, these are just ways that I'm using the Bible to equip myself, to be able to study more, to be able to study better, keep my commentaries, all my Kindle books. Uh, the Kindle books I buy are like a dollar. Okay. Um, but you version, uh, most of you guys know you version. Okay. Here it is. You can, um, well, I'm not having shared my screen. So most of you guys know version here. I use version a lot because you have all of these different Bibles with you all the time, everywhere. Some of them will even read them out loud to you, right? And for those of you familiar with the, the channel, I've mentioned before that I use Google Suite a lot. This is my, this is my Google Suite claiming Christianity has its own page for videos and whatnot. Uh, and they're all right there. As long as you have an internet connection, you can download your notes, you can take notes. Um, I did a, a video quite a while back on how I study the Bible. Okay. So I have all the books of the Bible here. They are, uh, I can access them anywhere and I can take my notes digitally. Everything in black is the words. I always leave the, the actual words of scripture in black. As I'm reading through the Bible, I take notes, highlights, different colors for different things. You can even import maps into some of these things and commentary sections. That's all stuff you just can't do with a physical Bible. Uh, so for those that are on the go, um, I would say, and for those that, you know, don't have space to have an entire library full of books, can't afford to buy an entire library full, full of books, uh, you know, you work on the go, you're out of the house a whole lot, whatever the case may be is you can carry a lot of that stuff with you on a device where you can't do that with a physical book or a physical Bible. As we wrap up here today, I hope this information has been beneficial. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to scroll through the comments here. You guys, it looks like you're chatting and I appreciate that um, in the comments. I don't know if I see any questions yet, but if I see one, I'll pop it up on the screen. Um, but I hope this has been helpful. If it has, give the video a thumbs up here because you never know who else might want some of this information. Um, 
but you know, one of the goals of this channel, and I don't rattle this off at the beginning like I used to, but it's to encourage and equip Christians to be who they claim to be. Uh, and equip is part of that equipping, equipping, and we can all gather good information from each other. How do you study the Bible? What books do you use? Is, does a physical Bible work better for you and for your hands? Great. Stick with that and do that. Uh, but seeing that there are some digital resources that we can use technology um, as, a, as a blessing to us, we can use it for the glory of God to help build the kingdom. And we can have all that information there right, right at our fingertips um, that, uh, that we have, I just read somebody's comment, Javon, and I agree with you. An iPad will never smell as good as goat skin leather. Um, thank you for, thank you for, for putting that there because that is true words have never been spoken. The fresh smell of a brand new Bible. There's nothing like it. And I'm not going to give up my, I'm not going to give up, uh, the hard copy of, of the Bibles that I have. Um, but I just wanted you to see that I've started using digital. It's something I never thought that I would say. Some of my best friends that know me have given me a hard time uh, because we grow. We live and we learn and we grow. Uh, if you asked me 10 years ago whether I was a young earth creationist or an old earth creationist, I would have told you I was an old earther. But now I have lots and lots of evidence because I did more studying uh, for young earth creationism. Uh, so we learn and we grow. Uh, if you asked me four or five years ago, if I'd ever use an iPad and bring that iPad to church to read the Bible, I would have said, no, there's no way. But now I know that there's all this, uh, resources out there, all this digital, uh, digital ability to, to read and study the word of God. Cause again, not everybody can have, um, shelves full of commentaries and that can get expensive. But, but if you have a device, most of us have a device already. And by the way, I didn't hook up my phone because I didn't think it was necessary for this particular video. Um, but my phone has all those same apps on it. So even if I don't have my iPad with me, I can still be reading the Bible. I can still be reading the books. And if you're familiar with at least iDevices, I'm not as familiar with non-Apple-based devices, so I'm not making a case here for Apple or, or Windows machines. But my devices all sync up, like flawlessly. So I can open up my Kindle and be reading that book by J.C. Ryle that I showed you guys a minute ago, Practical Religion. Get that book uh, and read it. But I can open that up on my phone while I'm waiting in line, you know, <laughs> like or or while I'm waiting, you know, for a doctor's appointment or whatever appointment you have, you can get a few pages written uh, or read. Uh, I, I plan on reading through. I do my best to read through the Bible every year. Um, and I'm going to read through it chronologically this year, and I'm going to do it on my device. Why I watched a video Tim Challies made years ago, because you can just open it up. I can just open up Accordance. It's right there. It has all the verses, because especially in the Old Testament, chronologically, it, it's not like you're reading all the way through an entire book. Sometimes it, it you you have parts of like Chronicles and the Samuels and the Kings that kind of intermix. And if you open that up on a device, it's all right there for you. Version has a lot of uh, Bible reading plans that you can just follow right along. It'll even beep at you. I told you guys earlier that I've started using Prayer Mate. I'm going to do a review on that uh, as soon as I've used it for a while. I want to really use it for a while uh, to decide whether I like it or not. Um, but so far, I've really appreciated it. It'll just stick up four or five different of my categories in front of me. Things that sometimes I, I forget about because I'm human and they get stuck in the back of my head. But but I want to be in prayer for people in my church or for friends or for myself or for whatever the case may be is. And using these digital resources sure can help and sure can um, make a difference. Now, like I said up front, I'm not trying to make a case to switch you. I, I really am not. I just want to share what I've learned. I've wa I want to share what I see and how I have started using digital devices. Am I ever going to go back? Who knows? Who knows what tomorrow's going to bring? Right. But as for me, as for right now, um, I've switched over in all my teaching and preaching and preparation to my iPad. And it has been a huge blessing to me because I have it with me all the time. I'm motivated to get into the word, to read through uh, books that I didn't have before because I can buy them for literally for one dollar on my Kindle. When I want to see highlights, um, they show up. Uh, you can even look them up on the computer after the fact, but you open up your Kindle and if you want to see highlights, I don't have too many highlights in this treasury of David. Um, but look, you can get rid of the actual Bible. And for those of you who may not be familiar with Kindle, you can 
you know, open up different sections and go to different locations. You can look up popular highlights for people and scroll through and it's right there. It, it makes the studying, it makes the word studies here. You know, when you open up your Bible and you want to know what morning meant, it defines it for you. This is the word in Hebrew and all this information is right there for you. And that's just something that you don't get from an actual physical Bible. That's all. That's the point I wanted to make today. And that's, what I wanted to share with you guys is that I'm excited to be using uh, a digital resources. It's definitely different for me. It's something that I'm getting used to. It feels funny walking in because at my church, which is a huge blessing, by the way, uh, most people bring their physical Bibles, which is great. And it sounds, maybe it sounds weird to you guys too. When I walked in the first time and the pastor opened the word to read the scripture for the day, everybody opened their Bible. And I was like, that is awesome. Cause I got asked at one point in a church that I was a part of years ago, I got asked by a member. Um, we were just talking after the service and she said, Oh, are you a pastor here? Um, and I said, Oh no, I, I'm not a pastor. And, and she said, Oh, I, I thought you were because you brought your Bible with you. Uh, folks, we need to be bringing it with us. We need to be reading it. We need to be in, in, in it all the time. Not just the pastor reads the Bible. Uh, so I thought that was kind of a funny thing. Uh, Robbie, I appreciate what you say here. Um, both physical and digital serve their own special purposes. That's exactly right. Having the right tool for the right job. Um, and uh, some of you do better with digital hard copies. I, I'm going to, again, I'm, I don't think that I'm exactly being hypocritical here, but I'm somewhat uh, mentioning things on both sides of the coin. I still am going to collect uh, hard copy books, all these books on the shelves. They ain't going away. Why? Because if for some reason, uh, someday, the, something happens to the internet and they take away my digital resources because that can happen. Uh, you know, I, again, I have friends in China that essentially have to, uh, and in persecuted countries that have told me how it works and they have to figure out a way to get copies of these books as hard copies on their digital devices to read them because they can't buy a hard copy. Well, you're going to have to come to my house to get these books out, um, to get these books out of my hands you know, so I always will have them there. My kids will always have them there to read from. Um, but it sure is more convenient for me to use the resources I have here to have a bunch of commentaries right here on my device. Uh, and all I got to do is click on the verse and those commentaries will come up. I have study notes you can get as I continue to talk here. A few things that I, I didn't show you guys. Um, I can open up the second, this second page and go to like study notes um, I have this little study Bibles. I want to know what the life application study Bible says on Psalm five. There it is. You all watched it happen here in live, <laughs> live. And I can take notes on all these things, my own personal notes. Um, and, and, and just, it just is convenient. I won't go on. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I just wanted to share with you guys some, some things that are out there. I did put links, uh, to like the web pages of a lot of the apps that I mentioned, Accordance Bible software. I really do encourage you to watch that video. I didn't put a link in the description here, but I made it a few weeks ago. Go watch it. I'm going to make more videos on this because I love it. I love having the resources there. I can buy resources one at a time. So I dropped links to NetBible, uh, which is a free resource. Uh, Accordance, which is nearly free. And for what you're getting, in my opinion, it, it's a great value. Um, to uh, PrayerMate, I did drop a link to the PrayerMate app. Um, and to version. if these are new apps to you or you don't have them, you want to check them out. They're there for you to read through down in the description. So I just wanted to let you guys know. Hey, thanks for hanging in there with me today. Um, I, I love sharing resources with you. I'm passionate about being in scripture and and doing what I can to get the people around me in into scripture. And if you're into digital devices and, and technology, you can use that for good. You can use that uh, for the kingdom and to study the word and to be in it. Uh, especially if this is going to sound funny because iPads can be pricey, but especially if money is an issue and you, you don't have an entire room to dedicate to physical books and physical Bibles in your house. Hey, you can get it on your device. You can have multiple copies, multiple translations, and be reading through the ESV and the NKJV and the NASB at the same time. I hope this has been, this video has been uh, helpful to you. I hope that it's been a blessing um, because these things have been a blessing to me and they really have pushed me to learn more and to grow more and to have resources with me. If you've gotten value out of it, uh, share it with a friend. Maybe they, they need to know this also. Maybe they didn't know that you can get a Bible for free right on your phone and you can read through 
um, some of these things and, and and get some help in these areas. Uh, and, you know, and Christians, we sharpen each other and we're here to grow together. Uh, next week, I think, is going to be the Christmas episode on the live stream. I like to talk about Christmas once a year during Christmas time because of what Christmas means to us, because what Christmas truly is, and it's important to remember these things. So I hope you'll join me. Don't forget, my friends, be the Christians you claim to be. 